The last week has been very busy in Indianapolis at Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the Indianapolis 500. We're going to go over everything that's gone on the last week, including the practices, the qualifying, the rain, Kyle Larson, and Penske. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where today I'm talking the Indianapolis 500. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What do you think of the Indianapolis 500? What do you think of maybe some surprises you've seen over the last week, whether it's good or bad? Plus, let me know any improvements I can make on the channel. So as I mentioned, it's been a very busy week in Indianapolis for the Indianapolis 500 prep. As per usual, pretty drama filled, some good racing, luckily no injuries, that's always a good thing. One thing that wasn't necessarily a good thing but was kind of expected, I feel like every time the Indy cars go back to Indianapolis for the Indianapolis 500, there tends to be some sort of rain affecting the event and Tuesday practice got rained out. And it also led into Wednesday, as Wednesday we had rain throughout the day. They did get some time on the track on Wednesday, and Penske quickly shown that they had a lot of speed for the 500, whether it comes to qualifying or to the race. Yet at the end of Wednesday practice, you had Penske being 1, 2, and 4, with Scotty McLaughlin, Will Power, and Joseph Newgarden. Overall, Wednesday was pretty uneventful. You did have Kyle Larson top the board for a little bit, which was pretty cool. He overall had a good day on Wednesday. Yeah! Yeah! Wednesday was probably the most uneventful day, I'd say, mainly because of the on and off rain. But Thursday might have been the most eventful day thus far. You had Lundquist wreck out in turn two, had a big slide, hit the wall. You had Grosjean and Ferrucci continuing their rivalry that's been going on the last couple of weeks. Then you had Marcus Erickson, who's probably had the most eventful week, I'd say. Erickson, of course, winning the Indianapolis 500 two years ago. Then last year, in epic fashion, finished second. But Erickson took a hard hit coming out of turn four, wrecking his car. It's been a very difficult week for Erickson. We'll talk a little bit more about him in a little bit. During Thursday practice, it was pretty interesting. They had David Malukas in the booth for quite a while, actually. Of course, David has been in the news recently after being let go from his Aero McLaren contract. Very unfortunate. Seems like a very talented young race car driver. One thing that I noticed on Thursday is that Kyle Larson didn't overall get very much track time. Very unfortunate. I feel like he should have gotten some more track time. And we'll, of course, be talking a lot about Kyle Larson in this video and his chances at possibly winning. The top three at the end of the Thursday practice ended up being Pato Award, Scotty Mack, and then Alex Pillow. On Thursday, they were actually making a decent amount of qualifying sort of runs, by the way, which is usually not the case on Thursday, but because of the possible rain on Friday, this is why they did this. Fast Friday ended up going pretty well for most drivers. Rain really wasn't an issue except for one driver in particular, and that is the youngest driver in the field, Nolan Siegel. Nolan spun it around, coming out of the corner, ended up flipping his car. A very gnarly incident at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. We've seen incidents like this before. Luckily, he was okay. They had to go to a backup car, and this backup car actually was a road course vehicle, so very interesting on how that was done. I watch IndyCar racing, but I'm not exactly sure if that is a normal thing to pull out a road course car as the backup vehicle for the Indianapolis 500. Let me know in the comments. There was a couple of other drivers that did struggle on Friday, including Kyle Larson. I think Kyle Larson was lagging behind his Aero McLaren teammates a decent amount on Fast Friday. Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan was struggling as well. They did the same thing last year. This team seems to struggle at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway over the last couple of seasons. And that is quite unfortunate. Graham Rahal is my favorite IndyCar driver. We will talk more about Graham Rahal and Rahal Letterman Lanigan in a little bit. Another team that seemed to be really struggling on Fast Friday 
was Ganassi, which was really surprising. All their cars were near the back of the field. Very surprising. Ganassi having a bunch of entries in this year's Indianapolis 500, and they usually find success. Dixon looking for that second Indianapolis 500 this season. And as the Andretti team overall had pretty good speed on Friday, there was one driver that was lagging behind, and that was Marcus Erickson after his wreck on Thursday. So I'm going to be going through two different top threes here. One of them is with tow, one is without tow, and tow in IndyCar is the same as draft in NASCAR. With tow, you had Colton Herta at the top of the board. Then actually you had Kyle Larson in second, and then Joseph Newgarden in third. Then without, you have Newgarden, Scotty Mack, and Alexander Rossi as the top three without. And looking at the laps without tow, you have Kyle Larson in 15th, and it looked like at this point that Larson might not have an amazing pull day, but still could have a very good pull day on Saturday and Sunday. Now we're going to get to Saturday qualifying. I'm aware there is a Saturday practice and there is a Sunday practice, but I feel like for the most part, race teams use this time to make sure their car is properly set up for their qualifying run. It's not necessarily making a bunch of really quick runs, just making sure nothing goes wrong. During the first qualifying day, you have three things decided. You have the bottom four, which are the four drivers that will be competing for the final three spots in the Indianapolis 500. Then you have the fast 12 decided, and the 12 drivers will compete to get the pole on Sunday. It'll be whittled down to six. And then you'll decide from then on who gets the front row and who gets the pole for the 108th running of the Indianapolis 500. And then you have 13th through 30th locked into the field, into their spot. So essentially, if you qualify anywhere between 13th and 30th, this is where you will start the Indianapolis 500 pending some sort of weird circumstances. So the drivers that would qualify between 13th and 30th would have Sunday off. Before we get to the overall results of the Saturday qualifying, we had a pretty major storyline go on, something called plenum events. I've never heard of, heard of these before. Like I mentioned, I watch IndyCar racing. I wouldn't say I'm a diehard like I am with NASCAR. I do enjoy old motorsports. I would have to look into it a little bit more, but I watched David Land's video during this day, and shout out to David Land, by the way, and everything he does. You should definitely keep an eye out on his channel and watch everything that he does. He does a lot for IndyCar and for motorsports in general. A plenum event is essentially the fuel gets up into the plenum inside the engine and it gets ignited some way and apparently it ties mainly to shifting gears. The driver this affected the most was Canapino. Canapino was on a fantastic run and it affected him really severely. Probably should have gotten a better qualifying position than he did. I consider him one of my underdogs, one of my dark horses for the Indianapolis 500. A couple other Chevy drivers that had this plenum event happen was Christian Rasmussen, Connor Daly, Pato Award, Kyle Larson, and Indiana's own Ed Carpenter. Chevy did hold a press conference to discuss the issues, and ever since then, the Chevy seemed to be fine, but it's definitely something to keep an eye on when we go to Sunday. Two of those drivers that actually had plenum events actually made the Fast 12. So let's start discussing the Fast 12 as right here on the left side of your screen, you'll look at the 12 drivers that made the Fast 12. A couple of big things to talk about when it comes to this Fast 12, starting with Team Penske. There's been a lot of talk throughout the week about Penske trying to lock up the front row for the 108th running of the Indianapolis 500. It's only happened one prior time, and that was Team Penske back in 1988. And after the Fast 12, the top three was Will Power, Scotty Mack, and last year's Indianapolis 500 champion, Joseph Newgarden. Despite Kyle Larson's plenum event, he did make the Fast 12 and not only make the Fast 12, made it convincingly by qualifying sixth at this portion of qualifying. Getting the last spot in the Fast 12, Ryan Hunter Ray, showing a lot of speed throughout the week, very surprising speed in that number 23 for Captain America. And probably the biggest talk of the town for the top 12 was Renus VK, who made a last second run to make it into the Fast 12. Very impressive from the young driver from Netherlands. Just to add on to that impressive last second qualifying run 
from Renus VK. It made it even more impressive and more of a dramatic moment, the fact that Ed VK wrecked earlier on in the qualifying session. He came back and ended up getting into the Fast 12. Very impressive from VK. This did knock out Colton Herta. He will be starting 13th for the Indianapolis 500. We will be talking more about Herta in a little bit. Now we're going to look at the bottom four and what four drivers will be fighting for the Indianapolis 500 lives on Sunday. Pietro Fittipaldi and Connor Daly were really flirting with this bottom four. Connor Daly, another driver that's had a very difficult week be, being infected by the plenum events. And he always looks strong in Indianapolis. And overall, he hasn't had the best of weeks. But they were able to lock up their spots for the Indianapolis 500. And the bottom four ended up being Catherine Legg, Graham Rahal, Marcus Erickson, and Nolan Siegel. Catherine Legg and Graham Rahal were in the same position last season. Graham Rahal did get eliminated from the Indianapolis 500 last season, but was able to come in later in the week as a substitute for Stefan Wilson. But Marcus Erickson's difficult week continued. Just two years ago, he won the Indianapolis 500. Last year, he finished second. And this year, he might not even make the race. Wow. 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 And then Nolan Siegel, the youngest driver in the field, plus a rookie in the Indianapolis 500. Plus he flipped. He flipped his car the day before, driving a road course car, a car that was ran in the Indianapolis GP just a couple of weeks ago. Now we're on to Sunday, and we're going to start with the Fast 12 and who advances to the Fast 6 to compete for the front row and the pole position for the Indianapolis 500. Three drivers that we pretty much knew were going to go to the Fast 6, and you're going to see them on the left side of your screen are those three Penske drivers, Scotty Mack, Will Power, and Joseph Newcarden, 1, 2, 3. Then the next three, I think we had a couple of surprises. One driver we expected to make that Fast 6 was Alexander Rossi, showing a lot of speed throughout the week. But then we have the two surprises. Kyle Larson and Santino Ferrucci. Kyle Larson has shown a lot of speed throughout the week. He has had some difficult days, a lot of learning curves for the driver of the number 17. But as someone that's followed Kyle Larson's whole career, he is a natural and he's able to pick up things very quickly. And it looks like he's done that at Indianapolis Motor Speedway for the most part. We'll get into a little bit more on that in just a little bit. And Santino Ferrucci driving the AJ Foyt number 14. He's proven that he's a very talented yet aggressive race car driver. I really like the way he races. He really stands out in this IndyCar crowd. But anytime it's time for the Indianapolis 500, Ferrucci seems to show a lot of speed. I can definitely see him winning the Indianapolis 500 one day. Question is, is that day this Sunday for the Indianapolis 500? I thought that Kyle Kirkwood and Felix Rosenquist had a decent shot at making the fast six, just came up short. They showed a lot of speed. Now we're on to the last chance, and Catherine Legg quickly shown that she was going to be in the Indianapolis 500, putting down a good run early. But then you had Marcus Erickson, Graham Rahal, and Nolan Siegel. Late in the last chance qualifying, Marcus Erickson cleared himself by putting out putting down a decent run and jumping ahead of Rahal where it left it between Rahal and Siegel. And there was only enough time for Siegel to make a run and Siegel was sitting just behind Rahal. Nolan Siegel's odds of making the Indianapolis 500 are very, very difficult at that point. He had his accident flipped over in his first running, or first attempt, I should say, of the Indianapolis 500, being a rookie, being as young as he is. And he's also driving a road course built car on the fastest track on the circuit. I really liked his interview afterwards. He was really trying to get the most out of it as he could. He ended up wrecking the car pretty hard, coming out of one and going into turn two, destroying the back end out of his car. He was trying to get the most of it, and he was saying that in his interview. Nolan Siegel got a lot of praise from Graham Rahal, along with other drivers and commentators. We could possibly hear a lot from this kid in the future. A very difficult, but a big learning experience for the young rookie. Now we're on to the Fast 6, and the Fast 6 ended up lining up exactly how I expected it to line up. 
Ferrucci and Larson, who's shown a lot of speed, continue to show speed in the fast six, but not as quick as their four other competitors who have just stand, stood out this whole week. You have the three Penske drivers plus Alexander Rossi for Aero McLaren. Rossi seemed really determined. You heard him in his interviews, was honestly a little upset that he was unable to make it happen, but he heard all the talk about Penske really wanting to lock up that front row and Rossi really wanted to spoil it, was unable to, is going to start fourth. Joseph Newgarden ended up being the third quickest out of the Penske drivers, qualifying third for the Indianapolis 500. It left it between Scotty Mack and Will Power. Will Power was on top of the board late. Will Power has been so close to getting the pull from the Indianapolis 500 on multiple occasions. But once again, he came up just short as Scotty Mack made a late run to snag the pole for the 108th running of the Indianapolis 500. It's very fitting because Penske locks up the front row for the second time in history, the first time since 1988, where Rick Mears was on that front row in the exact same scheme that Scotty Mack is racing this weekend from the pole position. Then we're on to Monday, and this is the last practice until Friday, which is carb day. I think this is one of the most important practices because you really show what sort of speed you have in the pack, what sort of speed you may have in the race. Not a lot of surprises at the front at the end of this practice. You had Joseph Newgarden. You had Colton Herta up there. You had Will Power in third. You had Pato Award in fifth. And you had Canapino in fourth. Canapino looking good. He's looking like a very good underdog pick for this race. I don't really hear anybody talking about him. And he's been showing a lot of speed throughout the week in that number 78. A couple of notable things from Monday, though. Kyle Larson, I noticed, was leading the group a good amount of the time. And there's some pros and cons to that. Some pros are that Aero McLaren potentially really believe in him on being the leader of the field and consider him a big favorite to win the race. But at the same time, he needs to get more experience in the pack he did get some throughout practice but i just noticed for the most part he was running towards the front of the group when he needs a lot of practice near the back of the pack and making passes a driver that i did notice that was doing a lot of that was colton herda and he was really fast as well he's been fast all week has been the fastest out of the andretti cars i would say him and kirkwood have shown a lot of speed Another driver that I was watching during practice a lot that was just making unconventional moves was Rasmussen. I don't really know much about Christian Rasmussen. He is a rookie in the Indianapolis 500. Like I mentioned, I don't really know much about this kid, but he was putting on a show, high aggression. I heard a couple of drivers were actually upset with the way he was racing, but it was very entertaining and he was trying things and actually making things work that a lot of other drivers couldn't. So he's a driver to watch out for on Sunday as well. I'm going to go more in depth with some of this stuff before the Indianapolis 500. I will be having an Indianapolis 500 preview video. I hope to have it out Thursday, maybe Friday morning. I'll go through my picks. I'll go through the starting lineup and who I think overall is going to do well, who might be some underdogs in the field, who I expect to maybe struggle in the race even. But just really quickly, a couple of favorites I would circle going into the race. The Penske drivers have been looking strong all week. Same thing with Aero McLaren. I'd say they're a step down from Penske, but they've been looking extremely strong as well. And I would include Callum Eilat in that conversation as well. He is an Aero McLaren driver. He's been kind of flying under the radar. He could be a big surprise on Sunday. I've already kind of mentioned a couple underdogs earlier like Canapino and Rasmussen and now Eilat, I think any one of them could be a big contender. And a couple of notables I would mention, you could always mention Elio Castroneves. I would say he hasn't looked the fastest this week, but I remember when he won a couple of years ago, he wasn't that fast and ended up winning the race. He's just a driver you can never count out anywhere we go, but especially at Indianapolis as he continues that drive for five. And Santino Ferrucci and Kyle Kirkwood, two drivers that have shown good speed throughout the whole week, and they've both been very fast at their trips to Indianapolis Motor Speedway. But that'll do for my, I would say, breakdown or overview of the last week at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. It's been a very action-packed, interesting, exciting week at Indianapolis Motor Speedway, prepping for the Indianapolis 500, possibly the biggest race in the world. 
As you can tell, I'm really pulling for Kyle Larson over everybody except for maybe Graham Rahal. Graham Rahal is my guy. But Sunday is a huge day for not just IndyCar with the Indianapolis 500. It's probably the biggest day in motorsports as you have Monaco in the morning and you have the Coca-Cola 600 in the evening. But that'll do it for me. Like I mentioned, keep an eye out for the Indianapolis 500 preview video coming out later in the week. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying peace.